Good morning, Christ community. Merry Christmas. It is great to be able to join you with my friends, Chris and Becca, on this Christmas Eve morning. We're so glad that you can join us for this service as a family, many homes, one family, and it's a great time to be with you as we worship the Lord together. We begin this morning with the lighting of the Advent candles. And the Advent wreath is, along with these candles, a sign of our hope as believers. The candle of joyous hope, of deep everlasting peace, of proclaimed joy and radical love are a sign that no matter our circumstances, we know we are not alone. For we long for Jesus Christ to appear and make all things new. Just as our ancestors waited for his first arrival, so we too long for his second. Today, we light the candle for love. The scripture reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in his name should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Please pray with me together. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you that we can gather together all over this region and even around the country as one family. We give you thanks and praise that we, together with your church around the world, are worshiping and praising you as we celebrate the giving of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Be present with us by your Holy Spirit. Work in and through us in the song and prayer, and through the word, and may you encourage and equip us as followers of Jesus to walk with you in this life. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name, amen. And now, let's sing.
And the silent stars go by Yet in thy dark street shine The everlasting light The hopes and fears of all thy This morning's scripture passage is Luke chapter 1, verses 67 to 79. It is the response of John the Baptist's father, Zechariah, when he says these words. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And as he said this through the holy prophets long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Over the last couple of weeks, I've spent time with author uh, Charles Maxey, and his book that he wrote, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. In this wonderful story, in the event that you haven't read it, you should go out and get it today. It is a wonderful story about a little boy, and this boy is wandering out by himself, and he is alone, but he gains three new friends, three unlikely friends, a mole, a fox, and a horse. And he starts wondering aloud with them about life. And he turns to the horse and he says, what is the bravest thing you have ever said, asked the boy. Help, said the horse. When have you been at your strongest, asked the boy. When I have dared to show my weakness. Asking for help isn't giving up, said the horse. It's refusing to give up. So the boy responds, you know all about me? Yes, said the horse. And you still love me? We love you all the more. What we celebrate this day and on this Christmas season is the fact that our God, 
knows everything about us and loves us all the more. What activated and ignited the soul of Zechariah was that his son would tell the world to prepare the way that God had sent his only son to redeem and to love us, to draw us to himself. And all he asks of us is to simply be willing to say, help. That when we ask for help, we are both at our strongest, though the world may see it as the weakest. And in that cry for help, our God, who loves us all the more, has come to us in his Son to offer us help. And on this Christmas Eve, I'm reminded of the words of Fleming Rutledge, who wrote many years ago when she wondered, who is it that shows up to church on Christmas Eve? She wrote these words. She said, most people in churches on Christmas Eve will be, well, what will they be? Some will be sincere believers. Some will be sentimentalists in search of childhood innocence. Some will be tradition lovers, seeking reassurance from repetition of old patterns. Some will be curious. Some will love the aesthetics. And some will be lonely. And some will even be drunk. But deep down, inside all of us, many of us know that we often can feel like a lost and frightened child who has lost their way who has experienced rejection, who has been shut out of the party, who truly is afraid deep down. So friends, let's spread the word in song, in lights, in prayers, in presence, in words and deeds of love that the Father, through his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has come seeking his children that he has a place set at his table for you by name, and that he will deliver us from numbness, from fear, and from guilt, so that we will be able to reach out with joy and gladness to those who have not yet heard. Emmanuel, Christ with us. So in the words of Zechariah's song, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. So we, like that little boy in Charles Maxie's story, we can cry for help. And our God, who loves us all the more, has sent help in his son. For that is what we rejoice in today. Pray with me. Father, I pray that we would find deep peace, joy, love, and grace in the truth that you have come to us. God with us. Emmanuel, now, Lord, by your spirit, turn our eyes towards Jesus, that we would see the light and welcome the wonderful grace that he brings. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> In the 
So normally, as we are gathered, we would celebrate the Lord's Supper. This morning, you can enjoy breakfast with each other, and we hope you've been encouraged. We hope that you know that we love you. We look forward to being with you. Let me remind you of some important things today. First, this evening's services. Our Christmas Eve services will be at 4 and 5.30 p.m. Nursery and preschool, child care are provided And after our 5.30 service, we will join together in the event center for those who are able as we will welcome Franklin Community Church and residents from Oak Cottage as we enjoy a Christmas Eve dinner together and welcoming them. Also, as we enter this final week, be reminded of our end of year giving as we seek to meet our giving goal by the end of this year. Please continue in the gracious act of giving in thanksgiving to the Lord to the ministry of word and deed here at Christ Community. And finally, as January begins, we want you to be aware of the new sermon series, The Meaning of Discipleship. And that together with our adult Sunday school classes will be all together in one class for the practices of discipleship as we together as the community here at Christ Community learn what does it mean to be disciples and followers of Jesus. We hope that you're able to join us. And so now, as we conclude this service, may you receive the promise, the good word, the benediction. May the love of God the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the presence of his spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.